Still calm, no harm in sight. Many hate it, but I enjoy it. I spend my days in the cold riding a chariot, gliding across the so-called miserable snow. Life flourishes, just not the life you expect. Through very careful discussion and reasoning practice every day, the students become more thoughtful and more responsible. My favorite thing about Athenium is all the readings we do. They're more interesting than public school. For example, we read uh, all the classic texts, Bacchae, Socrates, Tao. We have read Pascal, Aristotle, and the Tao about just how everything ties in together. You go home and just sit and think about it sometimes. I did my uh, midterm essay, my 10-page essay, on Aristotle's happiness. Last semester, we read a reading, The Bacchae. It's a Greek tragedy, and uh, that really influenced me. I like. Reading that was really interesting, just the way it was described and everything sparked my ideas. I started liking reading after that. What the parents can expect from the Athenian practice is that their children become more thoughtful and ultimately more responsible and more reasonable in their actions because they're practicing that every day not just in a math class where they're practicing sort of a logical progression of ideas, but all over the board, um, talking about friendships, talking about what's important in terms of justice or what's beautiful, what love is, any kind of topic that's really on their minds and compelled by. We discuss it constantly using the best things that have ever been written about that. Every day influences you and I think the school's an inspiration. Well, I like the whole system. Like, in the morning we do our Tai Chi, and it just kind of gets you ready for the day. It's the uh, basis of uh, where m many martial arts started, and where it came from. So, you can see different styles. And then we do our seminars. I really like the seminar system. Someone will say an idea and then it'll spark your idea. And the readings, the, you'll get a deeper meaning from someone else and from reading it. Like uh, you could read a reading twice and get a completely different idea from what you read from before. The grass, eager to be touched is whispering stories of the winter blues, echoing in my head. Everything around me is coming together like a symphony of grass and sunshine. When I said Whittier, calm and still, mountains encased in snow, untouched. Mm -hmm. One way to chop it up and make it more concise is just get rid of the things that make it sense. This one sounds a little more poetic because it's not the same thing. Is whispering is a little bit passive to so make it a little more active. What's that grass doing? It's whisper, whisper, or whispers. Winter is gone and spring begins, or winter is gone. Spring begins. I comma, mean, spring I begins. I like the last line. Goodbye, wicked mother, mother. Yeah. Yep. that you will come back. Yeah, yeah she likes it. So one thing I noticed this week when we went out to write our topic is Alaska poetry. So we've been reading some of the famous Alaska poets and the students have been writing their own poetry. But we decided that it was such a beautiful day out, we decided to go down an arm and crawl around in the rocks and write poetry in the mountains looking over the ocean. And when we did that, I was really surprised and pleasantly surprised that the writing improved a lot. And the students, I think, were affected by their environment in such a way that just by observing around them at all, their ideas came together really well. And so we got some really powerful poetry. 
And we take that in many areas of the school. We try to get the students out of the classroom and either to conferences or public events or wilderness trips, camping trips, where the students have that valuable direct experience with their surroundings and they can write better, think better, observe better, more carefully, and get a lot out of it when they're on location. The people I've met through coming here, um, I would have never met the president of Iceland. That's a once-in-a-lifetime experience to actually meet him. But now that I know him, I've got that connection. Um, especially around town, I'm because of the situations I've been put in and the way I've learned to talk with people, um, it's allowed me to actually reach out to adults and to people in power, such as politicians or people higher up in businesses, where I can actually have a meaningful discussion with them, uh, maybe an engineer about the effects of renewable energy and its cleanliness, or a politician on the value of renewable energy in an Alaska and Anchorage, especially in Anchorage, in a society like we have. I'm very happy at this school. I've made friends that are probably going to be lifelong friends. So, and the school is really good. <laughs> It's just a great thing in general. Coming there has been life changing. If we want this perfect society, we need to have pride for the native culture. That means we are willing to learn from them. What the media rarely captures is their culture. The native culture is filled with beautiful art, stories of the land, and their connection and respect for the land. If we could look past our preconceptions, all the negative things that the media releases, then we could find a very sophisticated culture. A culture whose understanding of the land exceeds our own Western understanding of nature. Athenia may seem like a place where you have to be smart, where you have to, no, I don't know, have read the Encyclopedia Britannica to actually get in, but you don't have to actually know anything to get in. You just have to want to know. And if you want to know, there is no better resource than Athenian.